Let's take a look at some Photoshop and Illustrator tips and tricks. I've been teaching Photoshop since 1999 as an Adobe Certified Instructor, and I'm always amazed at how many people have not heard of Photoshop Elements, uh, which is an, not just an elementary version, it's just designed to help you get up to speed as quickly as possible. For example, it starts up with this website that you see here that has all these tutorials, and there's something very fishy about this photo. So if you click these, you'll be guided through just how people are using the product, there's movies and so forth. But there's basically four rooms like this quick room here that shows you like a before and after view and you could do this in Photoshop but you have to tile your images and there's a very basic set of tools here there's even a whiten teeth brush and straighten image tool and so forth and my favorite feature is you can go to the enhance menu here and watch what happens when I choose auto haze removal keep your eye on the after image there see how that depth of field is just increased it kind of takes the mist out of the air works well over water as well there even is under enhance here if you go to haze removal there's an additional dialog box that gives you like scrubby sliders if it's a little too harsh you can tone it down you can play with the sensitivity and so forth and again you can always take a look at before and after view I'll go ahead and say OK to that and let's just kind of look at this guided edit mode. There's all sorts of smart fixes and so forth. But this just kind of gives you like a before and after kind of a view. And these are wizards that walk you through the process of some of the most popular features of Photoshop. It's just all of like Photoshop's greatest hits are here. Not just basics, but how to work with color images. You know, if you want to enhance color. Again, these will just guide you through the process. Each one of these is kind of like a wizard. There's all sorts of fun things here. Uh, that you don't have to really know a thing about Photoshop to just kind of get started. Uh, you'll find there's just dozens of things here. Photo Merge, one of my favorites, uh, is wonderful for creating panoramas and so forth. And then if you move on to expert mode, this is where it starts to resemble Photoshop. But you have tools that I wish we had in Photoshop, like this smart brush here. It has like a blue skies feature. Watch what happens if you just drag over the sky here. It makes like blue skies. And you don't have to know a thing about creating adjustment layers is what it just created there. But you do need to know to reselect the layer with the pixels. That's important. So where the expert mode in Photoshop Elements Editor leaves off, the Photoshop CC program picks up. Uh, but there's another component to Photoshop Elements I want to show you, and it's known as the Elements Organizer. And there's an amazing new feature here for Photoshop Elements 15 called Smart Tags. And this analyzes the image data for faces and the actual places and things that you see in these photos. So for example, uh, if you let this run in the background in a matter of minutes, perhaps hours, it'll find like all these pictures of a garden or of flowers and so forth. It's like having your own Google search appliance behind your firewall that just instantly finds your photos for you. So that is a really big breakthrough and I wish we had that in like bridge perhaps, but it's only available in Elements Organizer 15. So let's kind of take a look at Photoshop CC itself. Of course, this is the industrial Strength product and just a few tips and tricks for getting an optimal workspace. I like to put properties and layers on the left. That way, as I'm working on things, I can instantly see, for example, the live shape properties here. Uh, this is where you control your stroke and fill. It's not done here with the foreground background colors, what this is in Photoshop. And if you kind of compare this to Illustrator's workspace, Again, I like layers on the left, but I also put appearance in the middle right here because this is probably the most important panel in Illustrator. And notice Artboards has its own separate panel, whereas in Photoshop, I'm just kind of going to switch back to Photoshop again, you can see there's Artboards here in the Layers panel. So it's kind of a little complicated, it takes a little getting used to, but I just find if I set up a workspace like this, it's much more efficient and it just kind of enhances my creativity. So you might consider taking time to, to build your own optimal workspace and when it comes to panels you know you pick these things up and watch the tip of the pointer touch the side is your clue and where it's going to dock things it's not the ghost of the panel that you see there so you know this would conjure up what I call another file cabinet over here and in that file cabinet drawer there's file folders and I like to kind of put everything in the right place and of course, we all, uh, you know, have a different way of adjusting our workspace. I have to keep an empty parking place for visitors or whatever panels uh, that I need for a particular project. So I'm just going to circle back here to Illustrator, and I just kind of want to show you my, a few of my favorite things. My all-time favorite with Creative Cloud, I think the biggest breakthrough was Touch Type, and it's hidden here behind the Type Tool. It's the very last one on the list. 
and it allows you to just grab individual characters. So you know, if you want to scale a letter like this, see how everything, just as nature intended it, you can just pick these things up and move them. Uh, I like to use the arrow keys, the cursor keys, to kind of nip and tuck things. This is called kerning. There's even a kerning game. There's a link in the article I just uh, wrote there. So I really encourage you to explore these tools. They're just hours of fun for the kids. And if you create like a lot of logos and you're still stuck with CS5 or 6, uh, this tool alone could be enough to uh, cost justify it. And it still is real text. You can go back to the regular type tool here and you can see all this text is still selectable. So take a look at some of these features and I think you'll be amazed at what Creative Cloud is evolving into. And also take a look at the mobile apps, which are really, I think, taking the world by storm. This kind of a new final frontier there with Photoshop Mix, Fix, and Photoshop Sketch is absolutely amazing.